everybody and welcome to my channel, Restaurant Recipe Recreations. This channel is dedicated to teaching you how to create your favorite signature dishes from the most popular restaurants. Today I'm going to teach you how to create the Panera Mac and Cheese. Now as everybody knows, Panera is known for their amazing baked goods and bread. In fact, the word Panera in Spanish actually means bread basket. But they also make wonderful salads, soups, and the macaroni and cheese is by far one of their most popular items particularly for children. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. It is such a simple dish. Uh, I have everything here ready to go. If you've seen any of my other episodes before, you know that I like to have all of my ingredients portioned out and ready to go. It's what the French refer to as mise en place, which that term is everything in its place. Once the cooking process starts, it can go quite quickly. And you don't wanna be stuck in another side of the kitchen, you know, trying to crush up garlic or, or mince um, onion while everything in your pan is burning and, and uh, like that. So you want to have everything ready to go and it just makes the cooking experience faster, uh, more enjoyable and easier. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've got my pan on high and I'm going to keep it on high just to melt the butter. We're going to start with one quarter cup or one stick of butter, unsalted butter. Always use unsalted butter because you'll always add salt to the end and you don't want your dish to come out too salty. So we're going to go ahead and melt this, keeping it on high. Now that the butter is melted, I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of milk. I did turn uh, the heat down to about medium high because I don't want the butter to burn. Now I'm adding two cups of heavy whipping cream. Now we're going to add to this mixture one teaspoon of dry yellow mustard. We're going to add a half of a teaspoon of white pepper. White pepper has a little bit of a bite to it, so you don't want to add too much, but it does go so well with any kind of a, a cheese sauce or a cream that you're using. And then let's go ahead and blend that together. We're going to let this all incorporate and then as soon as this comes back to a very slow boil we'll go ahead and add the shredded and the cubed cheese okay here we have a nice slow boil I'm going to add eight ounces of shredded white cheddar now I always like to shred my own cheese when you buy pre shredded uh, pre bagged um, shredded cheese it comes coated with this kind of nasty powder uh, that they use as a preservative and I just think that when you shred your own cheese it just gives it a nicer consistency nicer flavor it's fresher oh jeez I'm making a mess here I'm gonna wipe that off okay and now we're going to add the secret ingredient which is four ounces of cubed Velveeta cheese I always say about Velveeta um, it's like spam everything has its place don't knock it until you try it um, and it's just, it just gives it such a nice creamy consistency. So we're going to go ahead and whisk this almost constantly until the cheese blend has been incorporated, all the cheese has been melted. You don't want any of it to separate and you just want to have a nice creamy consistency. Now notice I have not added any salt yet. We are going to use a pound of Barilla pasta and I'll get to that in a second. But I've salted the water to cook the, the pasta and I always add salt at the very, very end. Um, what I say is that you can't, you can always add more if you need it, you can't take it away once it's in. And keep in mind that a lot of the ingredients that you'll be cooking with already have salt in it. There's a little bit of salt in the cheese, obviously Velveeta has a little bit of salt in it, the pasta's been salted, and so you really want to wait until the very end to salt your dish. Um, give it a taste test and if you feel like it needs a little bit more by all means feel free if not leave it out I am almost completely blended here now I'm going to add the secret secret to all cream and cheeses uh, whether it's a, a manicotti a, a cheese you know ricotta for stuffed manicotti a cream soup is the juice of one half lemon now I add a lemon component to just about every dish that I use that's heavy in either cream or cheese or both. 
the lemon has a tendency to brighten up uh, the flavors. You know, sometimes when you're using a lot of cream and cheese, it can feel kind of heavy and what I say is like a little bit of a flabby mouthfeel. But lemon zest or lemon juice fresh um, it just makes all the difference in the world. It brings all the flavors um, kind of, you know, to the forefront of your mouth and it just makes it this wonderful, you know, this wonderful bright flavor. And I turn down my stove to like a low heat because right now the cream sauce is well incorporated. It looks to be just around about the proper thickness. You don't want it to be too thick because when you add the pasta, that's going to add a thickness to it as well. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it as is. I don't need to use any thickener on this because the amounts have come out just about perfect. And now I'm gonna add one pound of Barilla pasta, the uh, elbows. Cook it according to the box, but do it on the al dente side. And as I mentioned before, make sure that you salt the water. It just gives the pasta a nicer flavor. We are gonna do a little bit of al dente because keep in mind, this is going to cook a little bit more in the pan. And even when you take pasta out of the boiling water and strain it, it still continues to cook for a while. So you wanna make sure that your mac and cheese isn't mushy uh, because that's just gross, frankly. I feel like it needs just a touch of salt, but I'm not going to add a lot. I would say that this is just about maybe, well, it's a pinch, but I think probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's really all it needs. There's quite a bit of salt flavor in the Velveeta and that really brings it out. Wonderful, this looks great. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and serve it up. Okay, there you have it, Panera's mac and cheese. You saw how simple that was. Literally took a matter of minutes. Go ahead and serve it for dinner with a nice side salad, uh, a, a, some crusty bread with the Carabas bread dip that you can see in one of my other episodes. Also, if you're interested in some other Panera dishes, check out the Panera Napa almond chicken salad. It's real nice, Clark. If you enjoyed this video today, please feel free to like and subscribe. I have the full recipe details in the uh, section below. So try the recipe and add in the comment lines how it worked for you. For updates on your favorite recipes from your favorite restaurants, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day. Love y'all. Cheers.